Hi. Hi. I'm Raquel from Bangladesh. Nice to meet you. It's lovely to meet you. <laughs> well, I'm glad to talk to you. Um, congrats for the show. Really, really love it. And oh, for your characters. <laughs> <laughs> well, the first question is for you, Jemima. Yeah. Uh, do you think that the darkness uh, Olivia survived Ended up adding her up. Um, ended up what? Sorry, ended up adding, adding her, adding her inside out. Yes, completely. I think um, what's sort of amazing in the show and amazing as an actor is to get to play someone over so many years, where you know when when the audience meet her, she's um, you know a, a woman she's an independent woman um she's pretty happy with her life and um she's quite a modern forward thinking woman and uh that all gets disrupted and slowly over decades and decades because of a man um she uh has to change and adapt and the things that uh, affect her and traumatize her uh, are very deep but they keep resurfacing and that pain keeps being brought up and then having kids is such a, a big deal having children that you love and do anything for and protecting them and their lives and the things that happen and it just grows and grows and grows and grows and grows yeah it's a you know there's a there's a a long point to get to um you know to to make her the woman that uh locks her grandkids in an attic there's a lot that comes before to get her there okay the next one is for you hannah karin was the only one who escaped hell for a while what do you think she was looking for when she comes she comes back i was back to foxworth hall and what when she comes back to Foxworth Hall. Ah, yes. Um, I mean, I think at the point where she comes back, like she really hasn't got another option. And I'm not sure she she would have gone back if it wasn't for desperation. I mean, her and her mum have a beautiful relationship. And I think it's such a shame that the impacts of everybody else has ended up impacting their relationship. So I love that she ends up going back, but... I, it is literally her last resort if and to unfortunately kind of to protect her children protect herself but that doesn't obviously end up happening necessarily <laughs> <laughs> oh, well in your opinion this is for the both of you in your opinion um what is the turning point of your character oh um i i feel like there are a f uh, there so are a many. few for <laughs> olivia down the line i mean the the first one is definitely meeting malcolm um uh, meeting malcolm foxworth completely derails her life in every way and in ways that she can't possibly foresee um and down the line i would say there are turning points uh which is maybe to do when uh her children are no longer at home and she realizes how much she needs them or she has anchored herself to them um and she is lost without them and that's another big turning point for her i think mm. um i mean I don't think there is a single moment for Corinne. I think if, if there was only a single moment, she might not have turned out the way that she turned out. But I think what's great is that there is this slow spiral. There's so many things that happen to her, which means that there's no escape. It's not one thing that she can pick herself up. Because I really do think at the start of the story, she picks herself up every single time and she starts looking for the positive and she's just a completely different character. But I think if I had to pick one a turning point it would probably be finding out who her father really is um because i think at that point there is a point of no return like she doesn't want to go she doesn't respect him um but yeah i think really the the beauty of the story is that there are so many things for corinne that go wrong which is why it's just so deep rooted there's not one thing to work on to fix her like it's just it's everything for her okay 
my sponsor. <laughs> <laughs> well, what do you, what uh, did your character uh, teach you for the both of you? Okay. Good question. <laughs> wow. That's a lot of people in that. <laughs> The answer is always how to too. be the perfect grandmother. <laughs> um, uh, oh. I don't know that I want to have learned anything from Korea. No, I know. <laughs> I well, I, anything um, yes, I think that I've learned more what not to do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think that's something I should read. I'm like panicking trying to think of something, but I, yeah, avoid acting like Corinna. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> don't be swayed by a good looking oh, gentleman yeah <laughs> <laughs> exactly <laughs> <laughs> well, and now my last one is what is the most powerful theme in your character for you you go I think when I auditioned for the show, one of my favorite things, I hadn't read the end of the script yet. I hadn't been given episode four, but my favorite thing was that her ability to pick herself up. I loved how she bounced back from everything and she really did have this ability, which is slightly terrifying to look on the positive side because even at the beginning, there is this element of like, why are you okay? You shouldn't be okay. And that is kind of like an interesting thing about her that maybe is the darkness that's sitting ready. But um, that, I think that's really powerful about her that for so long she was able to keep going and actually yeah. then she couldn't pick herself up again by the end. I feel like that's true for both, yeah. both yeah. these women. Um, and it is, and maybe, you know, we outside of the story question how they react to things, but they do continuously keep God. reacting and keep moving forward in whatever way, in a questionable way often, but um, absolutely, they do pick themselves up again. Yeah. Maybe they shouldn't have. You know, <laughs> should have stayed, laid on the floor. <laughs> That's amazing. Thank you, ladies. Um, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye, Rebecca. <laughs>